Deep in space, there is a cosmic terror that can consume nebulas, planets, and stars. A single strike from this creature contains enough cosmic force to destroy a god. By killing the Moon Lord in Providence, Magnus had unknowingly sent out ripples of energy into space, essentially chumming the galaxy and drawing in the cosmic apex predator. Recently, Magnus could see stars going dark in the sky each night. He knew this couldn't be good, so he monitored and recorded the changes. Until one night he could see something entering his atmosphere. For the first time in a long time, Magnus remembered what it felt like to be truly afraid. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another episode of Magnus the Mage. We are doing a Calamity playthrough using only magic weapons. Last episode we defeated the Poltergast and we are pretty well prepared to start fighting the Devourer of Gods. However, I've got a few suggestions from the comments and I wanted to go ahead and try some of these things out. The first is to craft a weapon that we missed last episode. First we need to craft the Spectre Rifle which is just Spectre Bars and Cores of Elium, and it's actually a ranged weapon, but we can turn it into a magic weapon. And then we need to craft the Lazinator, which is just the combination of the Space Gun, Laser Rifle, and Victory Shards. And that's actually a magic weapon. I don't think I ever used that. And there we go. Now we have the Aether's Whisper. Whoa. <laughs> that looks pretty sweet. Next, I want to jump right into our first boss fight attempt against the Devourer of Gods. I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of attempts here, so I'm not hoping for a clear on the first try. I mainly just want to try out a couple different weapons, like right now we're using the Shadow Bolt Staff, and it seems to be working alright. The only thing I kind of don't like about it is that it's missing a lot of the headshots because there's no helming element, and the Devourer of Gods is often off the screen, so it's a bit hard to land those hits. Now that we've switched to the Phantasmal Fury, it seems to be doing a little bit better, but it's hard to tell just yet. I want to also try using the Dark Spark, because I've heard several people mention that this is a pretty good weapon for the fight. So this weapon's working pretty well. Kills the adds. Oh no. Yeah, the one hit from the boss is going to make this pretty hard. But there were a couple things I wanted to craft as well before we do our next attempts. The other thing I wanted to craft is the Omega Blue Armor. It's a pretty unique set. It does a lot of extra damage, but you lose a little bit of survivability. So let's go ahead and compare. We've got 166 defense with our Blood Flare, and with the Omega Blue, we have 149 defense, so we've dropped our defense quite a bit, and we've got these little tentacles that do lifesteal. The set bonus is that it increases armor penetration by 50. It has a 10% increased damage and critical strike chance. You can also press G to activate Abyssal Madness for 5 seconds. Abyssal Madness increases damage, critical strike chance, and tentacle aggression and range. But another thing I wanted to attempt is using the Reaper Tooth Necklace. We had crafted that last episode, and I'm thinking it could be pretty powerful against the Devourer of Gods. And in that fight, we really want to be prioritizing damage because any hit by the head will end the fight. So the faster we can move through the fight, the better. The other thing I want to do is have this Brimrose mount because it moves pretty quickly. I think we are ready to try this once more. Hopefully we can do a little bit better but it's all just going to be practice getting used to this fight. I mean, this weapon's doing quite well. Ooh, I should have had mana for that. Okay, well this is at least killing the first phase pretty quickly. I like this. Oh, 
Oh no. Ah oh, man, I saw that coming and I tried to discord. And teleport at the last minute. Get off the mountain, dash. Oh no. What even happened there? <laughs> at least we found a good way to do some consistent damage. I really appreciate everybody commenting and giving me some good suggestions for this fight. It's very helpful. This is going to be so hard. Okay, we got through the first phase. And let's switch off our shark tooth necklace and get going on the sentinels. In fact, we could try using the dark spark. Okay, this seems to be a pretty effective spell. Yeah, that's the way to do that part. And I think this is going to do really well against the Storm Weaver as well. I can't use my Prism spell. That's really weird. Yeah, I don't know what was causing that. But I really need to heal up here before I die. Oh no. Magnus is all <laughs> powerful <laughs> until he gets to the Devourer of Gods. Okay, well, at least we've got that part finished up. Okay, well, we're doing some damage here. It's not too bad. We got down to 60%. And now we've got lasers. Oof. Okay, we just gotta stay alive. Which is going to be very challenging. No, 50%. I've made a spawn point up in the sky so we don't have to keep jumping up here and running to the center of the arena. That will help us out a little bit. I think for the next few attempts I'm going to do a little montage instead of talking through the fights because I have a feeling we're going to be doing a lot of attempts. So yeah, cue the montage. So here is the montage of deaths. A lot of these were from getting hit by the head because it does that one hit kill, which is really challenging. And sometimes I even had full health when it happened. But yeah, I kind of completely switched over to the Phantasmal Fury, which was doing pretty well. Um, but that head hit kept getting me. I was getting a little bit more consistent and getting to the second phase quite a bit and the sentinels were no longer an issue. I figured out how to do those really consistently as well. Um, but these lasers weren't the worst. They got me a few times, but mainly it was getting hit by the head in the second phase that was really hard to dodge. Using Discord is probably the most effective way I found to dodge the Devourer of God's second form, but sometimes you've already Discorded and if he turns right around and attacks again, then you're just kind of vulnerable and it's easy for the Devourer of Gods to hit you with the head I also started to try using the Blood Flare armor instead of the Omega Blue because it was giving me more defense and it also dropped Mana Stars all over the arena, which was really nice. And then with the Reaper Tooth, I found that it was just making me die more to the lasers and things like that, so I started switching to the Deific Amulet for most of the runs.
And here is the final attempt. I'm narrating after the fact. Uh, I was completely silent throughout this whole fight, just focusing. During this fight, I definitely found that the Phantasmal Fury was the best way to go, and I would use the Brimrose mount to move quickly and then get off of it right when the boss would start shooting lasers so I could dodge. I would just try to get adrenaline as much as possible and then use it whenever the boss was charging, like right here. And I ran right into the boss, which was kind of a silly mistake, but it doesn't really matter. We tended to have a lot of health during these fights. And another almost death right there. <laughs> oh man, I don't know why I jumped up, but I somehow survived that. And then used the Dark Spark to kill the little adds. It seems to be the best weapon for that that I used. The Infernal Fork might also be pretty good on that part as well. And then definitely the Dark Spark's really great for the Ceaseless Void. My strategy was just to continually run away and change heights to avoid all of the orbs that he spawns. And then just keep shooting the Dark Spark and Adrenaline as needed. And it pretty much knocks out all of his adds and finishes him off pretty effectively. The next part is the Stormweaver, which it doesn't actually let me use the Dark Spark. I think it's been programmed. Um, so I end up having to use the Phantasmal Fury, but that works really well anyways. So it pretty much instantly kills both of those bosses. And then Cygnus just kind of run backwards, pick up little mana stars, and dodge the little orbs that he spawns, because those do some pretty good damage. The Phantasmal Fury can do pretty quick work against Cygnus. Then right here, I just kind of wait and see what's going to happen, because I want to dash in the direction the boss starts moving, and then immediately use my Brimrose to start going max speed, and then just throw as many Phantasmal Fury spells as I can out. Once when he changes directions, I try to get some distance, get back on the Brimrose, and run. Run for my life, <laughs> discord, and continue. The goal is to get down to the 60% as fast as possible because it's actually easier when he's doing lasers, in my opinion. Because the lasers mean that you can't actually get hit by the head for a few seconds, so you're actually pretty safe during lasers. You just keep dodging them, and you can still do some damage, so I really focus on continually shooting during the laser part, because these, even if you're not aiming, you're still going to have the homing effect of the Phantasmal Fury, so it still does tons of damage. And Discord, back to the lasers, so I'm safe for a little bit. I try not to Discord too much during the laser phase, because I want to always save my Discord for when the head is charging at me. And then once when you get down to like 40% or so, it starts just getting super like scary. You just get nervous because it's not every attempt that you get this far. So I just try to keep my cool and stay calm and focused and pretend that he's not at 30% or wherever he's at. And here we go. He seems to get a little bit more aggressive, but that just might be in my head. I don't know. But now we're down to 20%, and that actually probably would have been a death. And right there, he, he left the laser phase, and I walked right through him, which was kind of weird. But fortunately, we had a Discord available there to dodge. And then, for some reason, I my map zoomed in, and so I had to like uh, take a second to zoom out, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see him coming. And right about here, I figured I was going to win, and I started getting pretty excited. There we go. There we go. We got him. We got him. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a hard fight. Man. Well, I think I got the pattern down. I practiced that quite a bit. And let's go over what worked. So the items that I have equipped are the Seraph Tracers, Elysian Aegis, Heart of the Elements, Deific Amulet, Sigil of Calamitous, Affliction, and the Absorber. 
And that's not necessarily the best option. I mean, there's probably lots of other good options. And then I have the blood flare armor. So that was the loadout for the fight. And let's pull in with our loot magnet, all this stuff around here. Make sure we have everything. Let's take a look at the Devourer of God's lore. It says, placing your inventory to boost true melee damage by 50%. However, due to your reckless nature, you will take increased damage. Well, that's insanely good for a true melee playthrough. And let's open our treasure bag. We'll go up here to the top of the base. And what did we get? The main thing is the Cosmolite, of course. We have the Excelsis sword. That's a pretty sweet sword. And then we have the Nebula Core, which increases damage and summons a floating Nebula Star to protect you. And then we have Staff of the Mech Worm, and we have the Death Hail Staff. Sweet. A magic weapon. And I think you already know what I'm about to do. I am going to buy some boss treasure bags. Now that we have Cosmolite, there is so much stuff we can do. It's kind of crazy. We can immediately upgrade so many things, like our tracers. Let's upgrade those. I think this is all we need. We just need the Elysian wings, Cosmolite, and Phantoplasm, and our Seraph tracers, and we can upgrade to the Elysian tracers, and those look really awesome. So next, we need to go buy some of the event summons. The Clother sells the pumpkin and the present, so we can get our endothermic energy and nightmare fuel. Let's do these events pretty quickly. Let's start with the Pumpkin Moon, since that one seems to be the easiest. After doing the Devourer of Gods fights, it's nice to do something that's just chill. And I think this is going to be our best weapon currently, to take down a Pumpkin. Seems to be doing alright. Kind of slow, but we'll get through it. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I love Mage, is just the look of the weapons. So cool. Doing this rainbow dark spark spell. I think that's probably good for now. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And let's pull in everything. Okay, we got 100 Nightmare Fuel. That should be good for now. On this event, I want to go ahead and do this a little bit faster. Now that we've kind of had a little chill time, we'll jump right through this. I'm just going to keep the Zerg going until we get our first Ice Queen, which I think is coming up soon because we're going through these waves pretty quickly. Okay, now we got an Ice Queen. We'll turn off Zerg and handle her. I'm really excited to see what weapons we have available now that we have Cosmolite. And I'll just go ahead and farm this up and cut to once when we have some endothermic energies. Now that we have our endothermic energy and nightmare fuel, we should be able to craft our Dradon's Forge, which requires a hard mode forge, anvil, ancient manipulator, luminite, Cosmolite, and nightmare and endothermic. So let's get all of that. And I think we should be able to craft it. There we go. The Dradon's Forge. And we can put it right there. That's perfect. Now that we have our forge, we can start combining accessories like the Absorber and the Ambrosial, which will combine into the sponge. I'm so excited about that. It's one of my favorite accessories. So let's go ahead and craft that up. It does all the good stuff from each of those, including the movement speed, the jump speed, and it also absorbs damage. So it's just basically so many good things all packed into one accessory. The next one that we can upgrade is the Sigil of Calamitous, which we can combine with the Ethereal Talisman. And all we need is our Mana Flower, which I'm pretty sure we have somewhere. And now we have the Ethereal Talisman. Excellent. So let's put that over there. Ooh, we can also upgrade our shield. We have our Asgard's Valor, and we have the Elysian Aegis. So we can craft the combination, which is the best shield, the Asgardian Aegis. I know we can upgrade the Deific Amulet. So we need the Frigid Bulwark, which is the Paladin Shields and the Frozen Turtle Shell. 
And I know we have a Paladin Shield, but I'm not sure if we have a Frozen Turtle Shell yet. But I think the accessory guy might actually sell the Frozen Turtle Shells. Yes, he does. Thank goodness. For 70 gold, but it's worth it. And there we go. And now we should be able to craft the Rampart of Deities. Perfect. Ooh, we can do a Devourer of Cods. <laughs> it's like an even better fishing item. Oh, uh, and we can also do the God Slayer armor. Yeah, maybe we should do the God Slayer armor first. Let's do that. There's so much good stuff to craft right now. Let's take a quick look at our stats. We got 189, and before we had 178. That was a really big increase. And we're up at 825, and before we were at 816. So pretty good stuff. And the God Slayer buff is amazing because you can survive fatal damage. We can make the Magnetic Meltdown, and that's the Cosmolite, Spectre Staff, and Magnet Seer. I'm pretty sure we have all of those. Oh, Soul Piercer. That's just an easy one to craft. So let's go ahead and grab that as well. And here we go. The Magnetic Meltdown. Seems like a pretty awesome spell. And it rolled Mythical on the first try. Let's go summon the Ravager and see what these weapons can do. Yes! This is so good! Oh my gosh. I love this weapon. He's no match for our magnetic spell. Yeah, Magnus is starting to feel strong. This is pretty sweet. And let's open that up. Whoa, so many things. Okay, so that was what we needed right there and right there. Now we can create the awesome Core of the Blood God. It increases damage reduction, it increases damage. It has enemy contact damage, which is really the main reason I use it. And it boosts your max life by 10%. So lots of good stuff from that accessory. Now that we have our full God Slayer and all of the accessories I wanted to craft, let's take a look at our potions because I think we can upgrade our healing potions as well. So let's see if we can find those. Here we go, the Omega Healing Potions. It takes 10 blood orbs, and so we won't be able to craft many. One thing I may wanna do though is I've got a summon for the Blood Moon. So if we put this on and we use our unlimited battler, <laughs> I mean, this might crash the game, but we can probably get some pretty good stuff going on here. I can turn on our unlimited battler and let's just get this going. We could use dark spark. That might be the best. Ooh, we should have put on our blood flare armor. Yeah, let's... Let's turn off the Battler, and that way we can go get our Blood Flare armor, because that will increase the amount of drops that we get from this. And we can turn the Ultimate Battler back on, and now we get, we'll get we get so many Blood Orbs. Yes! So much <laughs> destruction. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. The 1,400 zombies we've killed now. This is pretty effective. Let's make sure we get some mana. Hoo 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 hoo, yes. We've already got 100 blood orbs from this. I think we're gonna have enough to make a lot of potions really quickly. And I'm impressed that it's not crashing our game. This is actually probably a pretty good way to get gold as well. Oh my gosh, we already have 500 blood orbs. Well, we've killed 1,700 possessed armors, 2,400 zombies, 800 dripplers. Oh, 2,450 zombies now. Yeah, this is <laughs> extremely effective. I think we're probably good. 
This is a little bit overkill, most likely. So let's turn off the Unlimited Battler, and let's finish off the rest of these mobs. Now, all we need to do is pull everything in with the loot magnet, and oh wow, yeah, that was overkill. <laughs> we have a thousand blood orbs now. Sweet, and so many banners. Let's get our potions crafted. Finish off all these. And now we have 111 Omega Healing Potions. We can upgrade the Demon Scythe to the Recitation of the Beast. So let's do that. Because we definitely have a Demon Scythe. And that's an easy one to do. Although we are getting low on Cosmolite. However, <laughs> doing that Blood Moon gave us enough that we can actually buy some treasure bags. So let's buy... Uh, two is probably good. Here we go. And let's see what that does. Oh, wow. This is amazing. It's very much like the Relic of Ruin, except more aggressive. I love it. So excited about that one. And then we can do the Primordial Ancient, which is Primordial Earth, Forbidden Fragments, Cosmolite, and Phantoplasm. There's such a cool sprite for this. Wow. That's pretty sweet. So the last thing we need is a laser machine gun. So let's go quickly over to the ocean biome. And let's get a Martian invasion going. Here we go. Martian saucer. And the Martian invasion has begun. Let's get back over here. And get this going. And we can kind of see what these do. Oh my gosh. This is like the best thing ever. An actual relic of ruin in post moon lord. Okay, let's get this saucer. This is so fast. Oh no, we're killing them too fast though. I need to wait for another saucer to come in. And now with some vortex fragments, let's craft our nano purge and we can combine those with phantoplasm and cosmolite to form the T1000. And let's see what the T1000 can do. Sweet. It's like progressively increases its speed. Got kind of a cool rainbow effect. So to finish off the episode, Let's test out some of these weapons and just see what type of damage we can do because they look so powerful. 130,000, 140, 145. This is one of the best <laughs> weapons I've seen at this stage of the game. That's absolutely insane. And here we got about 50,000, really good. And this one can do about 50,000 as well, Primordial Ancient. And this Soul Piercer, eh, doesn't seem to be that good. This one can do actually a lot, 80,000. Okay, maybe I'll keep that one. And the T1000, lastly. When it scales up, it can get up to about 50,000. I mean, Magnetic Meltdown just seems to be by far the strongest but I'm sure we'll find uses for every one of these. So next episode, we'll be able to start fighting the old Duke and Yaren. It is gonna be an action-packed episode with probably lots of fails, but we will defeat Yaren. Magnus is committed. So it's gonna be some fun stuff coming up. If you've enjoyed this episode and the series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.